So I actually had zero intention of tackling this project today. I was actually working on another video and I just got fed up. So today we're gonna change the layout of the garage. It is a disaster in here. I think this is the worst it's been in a long time. So I don't know if you remember, the toolbox used to be in this sort of area. I moved that against the back wall and I actually moved the shelving and then the threading machine and everything to that back corner. The reason I did this was I don't have a place to put sheet goods that doesn't block something because I share this space with my dad and it just turns into a nightmare trying to store the sheet goods. So I came up with this idea of leaving the toolbox a little bit off the wall and a full eight foot sheet of plywood can now, or eight foot sheet of anything, can now go up against the wall be secured and prevented from falling over by the toolbox and it's out of the way of everybody. So there were actually a couple upgrades or I guess things that I wanted to repair while I was doing this layout change. There were some missing sheetrock panels that have been like this I think since the garage was built originally and that little office space was built originally that I just wanted to fill in. And before I got to this of course I got sidetracked and wanted to rip the carpet out. Well, I like the carpet in here because it gave me some place to sit when it was cool in here and I wanted to work on something larger on the floor. Look how much dirt and dust is stuck underneath. Even after vacuuming it, it just gets trapped under there. That's why a lot of people don't put carpet in their house. Right, anyway, back to patching up that sheetrock. Before I could actually cover up this hole in the wall on the office side, I had to replace a broken outlet. You could actually see a piece of the outlet fall off as I take the cover off. And at the same time, because I didn't want to bury a box in the wall, because around here that's not the code, I decided to replace this junction box with another outlet, because who doesn't need another outlet in the garage? So at this point in the process, I'm not sure if it's looking better or worse, but I promise it's gonna get better. So you can see I was storing my sheet goods along that side wall and that really covered up all of the stuff on the left side of the garage and prevented things from getting put away in the right spot and all around just caused problems. So because we had some nice weather and I like to go to the store first thing in the morning to get that out of the way and prevent breaking the day up, I ran out and grabbed a piece of three quarter inch OSB and a piece of three quarter inch plywood. You'll see what this is for in a second. So as you can tell, things are starting to look a lot better. I did do a lot of cleaning off camera because I didn't want to waste everybody's time watching me pick stuff up and put it away back where it belonged, but we were getting there at this point. So if you watched my most recent video where I made those signs utilizing my new laser, I'll link that video somewhere on the screen. You'll know that I used a lot of different color cans of spray paint and the way that I have those stored or the way that I had those stored was in a cabinet that it was very difficult to see what colors I had and just all around not a good way to organize the paint. So I ended up going on Etsy and I found a seller that was selling a file that allowed for these stackable spray paint storage solutions and I figured I'd give them a shot. For this, I use some five millimeter plywood, I think it is, or three sixteenths or something like that. This is just some generic birch stuff that I got from Big Box Store and it seemed to work pretty well. I'll make sure to link that seller below because man, these things are really cool. All you see me doing here with the circular saw is breaking down that big panel so it would fit in the bed of my laser. With a few of these blank panels all set up and ready to cut, it was simple as loading up the program and pressing start. The nice thing about this storage solution and the construction methods associated with it was I could let these components get cut out while I was working on something else. This helps speed up this process a lot and I think it does a good job of showing some more of the versatility that this laser is capable of. I look forward to experimenting with some more storage solutions that I designed myself, but because there was kind of a time crunch for this, this design was a great option as well. So 
in between some of the other stuff I was working on, I decided to start gluing up some of these spray paint storage assemblies. I just used some Type On 3 and some blue painter's tape to hold these together while the glue dried. So I know I mentioned this paint in my last video, but if you haven't used anything besides your generic Rust-Oleum or Krylon, definitely give some of this Belton Molotov paint a try. It covers so much better and gives you such a better surface finish. So honestly, at this point, this could have been a completely separate video, but why not include it in this one? Like many of you that work out of a single car or even a two car garage, or even smaller for that matter, space is definitely always an issue. So to maximize some storage, I decided to build a French cleat wall. If you guys don't know what that is, it's basically just two angle pieces of wood that act as a cleat, I guess you could call it. You'll see what I mean in a second if you don't know what this is. But either way, it allows for a customizable and modular storage solution for a lot of the small hand tools and even power tools that I have. So to start this process off, I just hung a piece of OSB on the wall to give a secure backer to mount all the cleats and tools to. And for this, I enlisted some help from the big guns. So, you should have been on this yeah, I know. I don't know why you did this. This is going in a God damn it. One more try. <laughs> Hey, are you recording this? Yeah, this isn't a laughing matter. <laughs> Come on, Jimmy! <laughs> so race against the clock. Let me get one more in and then you let go. I'm nervous. Let go. Great job, chicken. Good, good teamwork. Yeah. With my happy helper out of the way, I proceeded to put a screw every 12 inches into the studs behind the sheetrock. You want to make sure you catch the studs because you don't want all the weight of all the tools relying on the strength of the sheetrock. Because I already had the track saw out from cutting the OSB, I decided to cut the blank strips that would form the cleats later on, which you'll see me cut the 45 on in a second. As you can see, all the spray paint storage was now glued up and ready to go, but because my garage wall that I wanted to mount this on was a block wall, I decided to mount a piece of the leftover plywood from the French cleats to the wall and then screw these into that. It just makes mounting these a little bit easier and minimizes the amount of times I had to drill into the concrete block. To mount the sheet of plywood to the wall, I used tilty anchors that I've actually never used before, and they worked pretty awesome. Because these specific anchors utilized a nut and bolt design, I decided to countersink the fasteners to prevent the bolt from getting in the way of the spray paint storage. And if anyone of my friends is watching this, yes, I used a Milwaukee drill. That's just simply because I don't have a DeWalt hammer drill. Thanks, Zach, for hooking this one up. Now that the plywood is all tight and secured to the wall, I utilize the fender washer and a regular drywall screw to mount all these assemblies. With all these up, I finally got to put all the spray paint in them. I have to say, even though this is just a storage solution, I think it does look pretty cool to have all the different color paint cans up against this wall. With that out of the way, it was finally time to cut the cleats for the French cleat wall. To do this, I just put the table saw on a 45 and ripped all these pieces directly down the center. This effectively gave me two cleats per each piece. 
So hopefully this was the last project I had to use this table saw on the ground like this for. I actually designed a whole workbench to integrate this table saw into in Fusion that I plan to build in my next video. So stay tuned for that one. You'll see the material on the floor at the end. To mount the actual cleat portion to the wall, I first pre-drilled through all the cleats and then screwed them up at an equal spacing. You want to make sure that the spacing between each cleat that's mounted to the wall is at least wide enough to fit the inverse portion of the cleat between them, or this concept won't work at all. With all the strips mounted, it was time to create all the tool holders. Now you can make these as simple or as complicated as you want, but for mine, I was purely limited by wanting to make all these holders out of whatever scrap material I had lying around. They're not the prettiest tool holders, and I may end up changing a few of them in the future, but they serve their purpose. This is what I meant by the inverse fitting between the strips. For a majority of these holders, I just use simple butt joints, type on three, and some brad nails to assemble these. A few of them here and there, mainly the heavier tools. I added some screws for some extra security, but I don't think they were really necessary. down like 10 more to go so like i said i continue to measure all these tools and come up with folders for each of them another tip i guess i would add in here make sure the backer piece spans to the next sleet strip below it or you'll have to add some blocking to hold it off the wall to support the bottom part of the holder I don't know why it is, but I'm thankful I do. I saved all these scrap cutoff pieces to make these holders. I ended up getting rid of a lot of this stuff that was kind of in bad shape, but I'm happy I kept some of this nicer birch plywood because a sheet of this now for the cheap big box stuff is like $90. Absolutely crazy. I was kind of silly here and nailed on that right side panel and I couldn't fit the nail gun in there to secure the inside of that horizontal piece. So I ended up using this right angle impact attachment with a countersink bit to put two screws in there. If you don't have one of these right angle attachments, I definitely recommend it because it can save you in a pinch to get in a tight area. If I was redoing this, I probably would have added another bay or two for some additional drills, but for now, I only have an impact driver and a single drill. One of the considerations I took while doing this, I wanted the drill to be right side up so I could easily reach it with one hand and not have to turn it around in my hand or flip it over if I was mounting them upside down. I've seen a couple different ways people hold the drills and I like this method I think the best. So I actually had zero intention of showing you this last tool holder and actually building this last tool holder, but I decided to try and cut some lap joints with the table saw blade, as well as some dado grooves to hold some thinner plywood to build some organization for my sandpaper. My previous way of storing my sandpaper and my sander was just to chuck it in a tubbleware, and it was always a mess and I never knew what grits I had. So now I have a bay for each grit, so I'll always know what sandpaper I have. This one was a lot more technical than the other ones and I made it all out of birch plywood and I actually faced it with some oak. So this one was definitely built to last and one I'm actually proud of that I made. 
Something I learned from doing this particular holder, I definitely should either have invested in a dado stack for the table saw or use my router to cut all these dados because it was definitely a little bit time consuming to keep bumping the blade over to make these three quarter inch dados and three sixteenths dados. Because I wanted a really clean transition between the plywood and the oak face, I decided to cut them a little oversized and then trim them down with the flush cut bit on the trim router. And after a final bit of cleanup, it was time to show you the finished space. So the reorganization of the garage is finally completed. This project took a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take. I did do a couple things in between that kind of slowed me down, but it couldn't come at a more perfect time because the days are getting shorter and the weather's getting colder. With that, I do have a lot of exciting stuff coming up and I can't wait to share that with you guys. So stay tuned for that. If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. And if you got anything from this video or learned anything from this video, please hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.